I bet you all want to see my new bike, don't you? All right, well, here it is. This is the U-Bike. Created by Giant to be a bike for everyone, you won't be going very fast, and you certainly won't be turning any heads, since there are literally thousands of identical bikes across Taipei. I don't get to take it home, I don't get to make it my own, but for only 66 US cents per hour, I get the privilege to take the previous user's trash out of the basket and pedal it from one U-Bike station to another. The frame set is constructed from 6061 aluminum and is about three sizes too small for me, but the color scheme and smiley faces are as big of a plus as Switzerland's flag. Only the most mediocre components are allowed on this bike. They're not great, but they're not terrible, and they get the job done while being as low maintenance as possible to keep the bike in working order for as many people as possible. The drivetrain includes a three-speed internal gearing Shimano Nexus hub paired with Shimano Nexus shifters, and the crankset at least lets you pretend you're riding Suntour Superbs. The drivetrain is protected by a chain guard, which also keeps your calf away from a dirty chain, so it's a win-win there. Moving on to the contact points, we presumably have Giant's generic in components. The cockpit has enough rise to make it comfortable for everyone from the sticky-fingered 10-year-old that still plays Pokemon Go to the 80-year-old grandma on her way to the park for her daily dose of Tai Chi. The handlebars come equipped with a very useful aluminum bell, which, if you get lucky with your bike, actually rings, but more often than not, gives a dead thunk. Moving on back, we have a quick-release seat clamp with an unattachable seat post and a very generously padded velo saddle. And the platform pedals? They go well with the rest of the strictly utilitarian build. The box section wheels are wrapped in 1.5 inch wide kendo rubber to soak up bumps and prevent flats. And it looks like even Giant has jumped onto the disc brake bandwagon and put them on their bike share workhorses. Probably the coolest thing about this bike, or at the very least, the most mildly interesting thing, are the lights. They're powered by the front dynamo hub and automatically turn on by some miracle of technology once it gets dark enough. Meaning, you can roll up to the club on a U bike and Press exactly nobody. It's a bike. It gets me from point A to point B, and even if it's too small for me and doesn't let me go as fast as I'd like, I have a dang good time on it. And this is the most convenient and well-run bike share system that I've seen. It's so well-run, in fact, even an enthusiast such as myself finds myself not absolutely needing my own bike in Taipei. But let's be real. I'm getting my own fixed gear, dang it. Why the heck don't I have my own bike yet? You might be rightfully wondering. Well, I've encountered a lot of problems. Now, it's no secret that I really hate travel vlogs and I'm about to complain a lot, so please do bear with me, but I swear that I'm complaining to make a point. After I posted my first vlog announcing that I was moving from San Francisco to here in Taipei City, Taiwan, a very nice subscriber by the name of Johnny from Australia hit me up and he said, Hey Zach, I go to Taipei every year. I'll hook you up with my sweet bike that's there. Just contact my friend and he'll get you the bike. So I said, that would be amazing. Thank you. What size is it? And he said, it's a 54. I normally ride a 58. So that was a no-go. So Johnny gets me into contact with the owner of a bike shop. He gets some friends to translate for me and he says, well, the shop is closed and I no longer have any stock left for you. The third thing that happened is that Matt from Wobby Cycles, yes, that Wobby Cycles, emailed me saying, hey Zach, it's really awesome that you're in Taiwan. I can hook you up with a great loaner bike because we got some friends in Taipei. So Matt from Wobby Cycles gets back to me and he says, yeah, Zach, about that loaner bike. Well, 58s are about as rare as authentic Mexican food in Taipei. I just decided, you know what? Taipei has really great bike share options. I'll just use that to hold me off until I get my fixed gear bike. There's two options for bike shares here. There's U-Bike and O-Bike. And for both of them, it turns out that you need a SIM card, which I did not have. So I run over to the wireless store to get a SIM card because I need to get a text message in order to sign up for the bike service. So I hop online, I go through the whole song and dance of trying to sign up for U-Bike, only to never get the confirmation text message. Because apparently, my SMS was not working for whatever reason, so I could not sign up for U-Bike. Thus, I had to go and sign up for O-Bike, which is considerably worse than the U-Bike. Thankfully, I successfully signed up for O-Bike, which is the stationless bike share. After riding it for the first time, I concluded that I would rather walk than ride an O-Bike. They don't unlock when you need them to, the drivetrain is really crunchy, and the fenders are always scraping up against the wheels. So I said, to the O-Bike. I know that you might be wondering, why didn't I just get my own fixed gear bike, dang it? Because I did not have cash. In Taiwan, nearly everything is paid by cash and they will not accept credit card or debit card or anything made of plastic. So to get cash to buy a bike, I had to run around the city for an afternoon trying a bunch of different ATMs only to be rejected and rejected every time. Finally, after hours of sweating buckets in the 34 degree heat on an 80% humidity afternoon, I finally found the one. An ATM that works, that is. I finally withdrew another 
enough money to finally buy my own fixed gear bike. I am deliberately complaining to you all because I really hate travel vlogs. I really hate social media. These things really romanticize travel when in reality, there's a lot of BS that you have to deal with and nobody talks about the BS. To me, travel vlogs are just like, I did this thing that I can't do back home, but more importantly, you can't do it ever. Uh -huh. Cool. Life is full of great things and things. And to me, it seems really disingenuous to only include the really spectacular aspects and showing that off to the world. I've been in Taipei for about three and a half weeks, and I think three and a half weeks is plenty of time to be bikeless. Now let's ride on over to Faith Gear, Faith, fixed, Faith, Faith, the Faith Gear bike shop to see if I can get myself a fixed gear. Hopefully they have a 58 centimeter, I'm not too tall. the city is. That ride was two miles and it took me an hour and it felt like I rode maybe seven to ten miles. Riding here is no joke. Here's the place. Really hope I can get a bike here. Hope I can afford a bike here. overstayed my welcome. Um, these very nice people here have hooked me up with a ride and I will be able to get it on Wednesday and I'll finally, after three weeks, be able to ride fixed gear in Taiwan with these people, no yes. less. Yes, yeah. welcome <laughs> to Taiwan. <laughs> if you come to Taiwan, you can come in my shop. Yeah, we can ride together. Yeah. Yes. They're, they're really cool people. They let me stay here for too long. <laughs> All right, so remember how I was saying that the people at the shop were very nice? Well, right now, I'm in the car yeah. with the shop owner, and he's taking me home because, so I don't have to ride the bus. Like, people are too nice here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. I'll bye -bye. see you on Wednesday. Okay. 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 Alright, bye-bye. Bye-bye. So I don't have my own fixed gear in Taipei just yet. I need to go back to Faith Gear and get it on Wednesday. Because go figure that shops in Asia wouldn't just have 58 centimeter frame sets on hand. That's one of the coolest shops that I've ever been to. And it turns out that the owner has seen my videos, which is crazy for me. Somebody all the way on the other side of the world, where I'm from, where they don't even predominantly speak English, has seen my videos. It's crazy. It's crazy. He gave me a ride home, and he gave me a really nice compliment. He said, if I were a girl, I would date you. And look, look at that. We homies now. Really cool job. So now that I'm finally getting my own fixed gear bike, some exciting stuff on the horizon, including some nighttime group rides. And there's also a daytime group ride if you're into sunshine. But I feel like things have just gotten real and it's about to get a whole lot more fun once I get my bike. Stay tuned, I hope you're excited for the fixed gear vlogs here in Taiwan. And with that, remember, just get on your bike and have a reasonably dangerous day. Mm -hmm.